start, so that's fine. Um, all right, so for those guys who don't know me, I'm uh, Darren Rollins from Radio Parts Group. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the uh, DOS camera range. Uh, we're not going to go into, um, and a little bit about the DVRs, we're not going to go into the, the menu options of the DVRs, um, port forwarding or anything like that. You'd be tied up for an extra hour probably trying to do that. So, but today we will talk about the, the new range of DOS cameras and the three technologies, the wide dynamic range, uh, not so much new, but the new ones we've added to our cameras, wide dynamic range, the new lens, um, and uh, <laughs> we'll get to that one anyway. <laughs> um, the, uh, and then also a bit about the DVR, a little bit about accessories as well, and remote access service. So we'll, uh, we'll go through that and, um, as we go. So we'll try to push through this uh, pretty quick and I can discuss. Oh, the FEO, digital signal processor, probably the most important is the other technology I was talking about, is the FEO chip. So we'll be discussing that as well. Uh, we'll try to push through reasonably quick because uh, we're out of running a little bit behind time, but um, I only also want you guys to have a look around afterwards. We've got a brand new security section just around the corner. Um, which finished last night, so please feel free to, to pop around and have a look at the cameras. All the cameras are on uh, view around there, uh, apart from the FHD dome, which I've got it here. We'll be on view tomorrow or uh, this afternoon, but we'll have a look at that today as well. So any questions, just uh, feel free to ask me. If, I, if there's something I can't answer, I'll find out before I get back to you. So, um, but we'll, uh, we'll discuss that as we go. Right, yeah. Um, Topics covered. Uh, who is DOS? The new features, the HD SDI, so the full HD cameras we'll be discussing, the 2013 DOS range, remote access, and a little bit on the future of DOS, just about the new DVR that's coming out. Uh, DOS, or who is DOS? It's one of Radio Parts Group's imported brands. It's been going since oh, probably about 2002 we started introducing DOS. Uh, mainly it was uh, designed for security, cable, um, and power products. We also do a few different uh, other products as well, but that's the three we, we initially started off with. Our security range has really improved, and also I guess that's a fantastic area or growth area of our business, is security. With the way the, the global financial crisis was a couple of years ago, some of the consumer electronics sales dropped down, but the security seemed to grow because people were willing to spend the money, customers are willing to spend the money to protect their property and protect their assets. So that's uh, certainly a part of, the, uh, of our business that's growing and expanding. So hence we don't need to uh, work out with new technology. Uh, you haven't missed anything, we're just starting, so it's all good. Uh, margins for resellers and installers. We uh, try to have a fair bit of margin for you guys so you can make a little bit of money on the cameras and also obviously on the installs from the labour. Um, we do try to listen to our resellers and installers, so some of these technologies come about because we've, we've listened to our installers of what they wanted, what their customers also want in their, in their jobs. Uh, and a designated trade website, so apart from our Radio Parts Group website, we've also got the dos.com.au website. No pricing, uh, but you can download specs on it, you can download a sell sheet on it, there will be YouTube clips on it in the future. Um, fantastic site, you can push your customers across if they want to view stuff and they're like, well yeah, I want to look at that, but is, have, you got, have you got some brochures on it? You can push them across to the DOS website and it's got nothing to do with radio parts and such, so we're not, we're not, you're not advertising where the stuff is coming from, you're just advertising a trade website. So feel free to, to push your customers across there. There is an 1800 number, if they ring, it will get answered at radio parts, but that's only the, yeah, there's, there's, no, there's, no, there's no other connection So we're talking about new features, as I said we're talking about wide dynamic range, the FEO chip and the new lens inside the cameras. So you can see we've come a long way. So wide, or WDR, wide dynamic range, are used when trying to view an image that is bright and dark areas simultaneously. A lot of people think that wide dynamic range is mainly used for darker areas, I suppose, to improve that. Um, but it's also used for, for bright areas as well. So it's, it's when it's a, a dark and bright image simultaneously. So a good example is in a, a dispatch area. You've got a camera set up that you're trying to record what's going in, what's going out, recording your workers. Um, 
and might have a roller door, for example. So when the roller door is down and it's a reasonably normal lit situation or a reasonably dark situation, the camera is set up um, that, it's, that, it, that you can view and you can see everyone. All of a sudden, the roller door comes up. It's exposed bright light into it. All of a sudden, that image or people walking through that bright light is lost. Basically, without wide dynamic range, you might see a black blob. You might see a a, you know, a moving image, but you can't tell. You can't tell what's male or female. Or you can't tell anything about it really. Um, so the wide dynamic range is that the fact is that it automatically adjust with those bright and dark areas in terms of. So that's what the feature is for. Um, and if you didn't have that, you might need two cameras. You might need one in your dispatch area and one outside your roller door. There's a, there's a really good clip on there that shows on, on YouTube actually where it shows, um, yeah, basically coming up. And I haven't got it on me here, but it, it's a really good image. It does show you that the cameras automatically adjust. So with, with this new, with the new camera range and the new FEO chip, which we'll talk about in a moment. The, the, the premium chip will have a true wide dynamic range. The entry level ones will still have, a, I guess, a type of wide dynamic range, but it's not called wide dynamic range, it's called ATR. Um, so, and the middle one will have basically a half baked, what they call baked wide dynamic range. So, a, a half wide dynamic range. It works, but it doesn't work like a true wide dynamic range. Um, bright windows behind an image, I've got an image coming up, bright windows behind an image, um, uses. Restaurants where there's a lot of windows, retail outlets, department stores, as I said, dispatch areas, anything that's going to be used with, with bright lights and dark areas in place. Let's bring up an image. This is actually a true image that was taken in our factory in China. So it's um it's actually not one we've just adapted or anything like that. So this is obviously off. You can see if anyone's walking in here or anything on the bench. You can't wake him up. I mean, except with the roller door coming up down, it, it changes light situations. But with this be going from dark to, to daytime, if someone's in that, someone comes in, you can't make it out. With wide dynamic range on, you can see it's adjusted, so you can see the uh, the table. You can see if anyone's walking in. Any sort of questions on there? Why would you turn it off? Ah, uh, you, you wouldn't. You wouldn't turn it off. What? Yeah, no, what, what it is is uh, it's actually two cameras. Yeah, so that image was it's not it's not. Yeah, I actually didn't check. I don't think you can even turn it off. It's automatic. It just it automatic senses it. But um, but yeah, no, this was just basically mean that that should really probably say no more dynamic range rather than off. But uh, yeah, you can you can basically yeah, it's, it's two different cameras. So that's one of the new features that we've offered, uh, we've, we've offered it with the wide dynamic range. You'll see that anything in the Pro series has got the wide, will have the wide dynamic range, except for the Dome 30, no, the Dome 30 Pro will have it, so the lens will be different in the wide dynamic range. So um, anything else in the FDO chip, if it's a standard chip, won't have the, or, or an entry level chip won't have the wide dynamic range. It'll have a, an ATR, which will go in the moment, which will go through that very, very soon. So that's one technology that we've added to our current range. The next is our FEO, or what stands for Enhanced Features and Final Image Processor. So we're actually talking about this a digital signal processor. So in, in basic terms with a camera, uh, you've got an image that's received by the camera or CCD or CMOS. It then um, changes the voltage or turns the voltage into a signal. That's what this chip does. So we're talking about the actual chip at the back or the chip inside the camera that's changing that voltage from receiving from the CCD into a signal. Um, different types, different technologies, and now this one has come has come forward and we're using it in our cameras. Basic terms, it's better. It's better resolution. We're looking at I think 540, is it 540 or 600 TV? I think it's 540 TVLs. Now it will be 700. With the, with, the, with the new FEO chip. Um, I'll go through some of the other extras as well, but um, that is, uh, that's the reason why we're using the FEO chips. Technology's there, so customers want it, so we use it. Three types, ESP, ESNP, sorry. They don't stand for anything, it's just the designs of the chips. A good way of, of, of understanding, I suppose, is E, 
entry level, S standard, P premium. It's not even really that, it's just, it's adaptive tone reproduction. As I said, every camera will have the facility to cope with bright and dark lights. It's just that some cameras with wide dynamic range will do it a lot better than cameras without it. So it has got a, a type of a, a tone reproduction. 2D noise reduction is on a still image. Uh, for example, in a doorway, it'll, it'll just clean out, clean out the image, it'll just clean out the pictures on a still image usually. Motion detection, it has got motion detection in it. Um, you can access it via the menus of the cameras, but obviously the DVRs will have motion detection. You would normally set it up via the DVR because you can set up your schedules. You can set up eight hours of motion detection at night and then normal recording during the day or something like that. But it has got the, the option to do it. Uh, privacy mask, for example, if you're in a retail outlet and you might have change rooms at the back, you might want to just put a privacy mask over there so, so the image is not recording on the change rooms. Or if you want to, you can record whatever suits your ideas. <laughs> so you can, uh, yeah, you can have that privacy mask. We won't go to highlight compensation. Preset on-screen display. It does come up with a fully preset on-screen display. Real you just need to plug it in, you're right to go. Um, obviously you have to adjust your focus and lens, but you shouldn't really need to go into that on-screen display. But you can if you want, you can just simply bring that up via the camera. So what they will bring up is you can bring up your motion detection, your privacy mask. Um, you can, I think, turn things up and turn things on depending on the, on, on the cameras. But realistically, once you've set it up and you've done your lens and you've done your focus, the rest you would control by your DVR, so your motion detection. In that, in that privacy mask is also like a spotting on the DVR where you can actually remove parts. So if you're doing motion detection and there's a tree moving, for example, in the corner, you can simply spot that out. So every time the tree moves the wind, it doesn't send your DVR into recording mode. Um, suppose we try by our light, we won't go into low power consumption. So that's the standard chip. Uh, sorry, the entry level chip. The standard chip, uh, multifunction model, 2D and 3D noise reduction. So we're talking about 2D cleans up the still image. 3D will clean up a moving image. So for example, if you've got a car going along, it'll just try to reduce some of the blur. Or so some of the blur, some of the lag, I guess. And just the idea of that 3D noise reduction is to try to limit it as well. Uh, ATR-X. So what that is, is, um, is that half-baked wide dynamic range, or kind of a half wide dynamic range we spoke about. Pretty sure it works in dark situations okay. I may have got this around the wrong way. I'm pretty sure it works in dark situations okay. It doesn't work in bright light situations where, where the uh, wide dynamic range will work in both. It just doesn't cope. It will cope with one but not the other. So that's the standard one. The premium FEO chip, realistically on, 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 the, pro, on, the, wide, on the high end models, we're talking about the wide dynamic range. So it's the same as the S, but with oh, wide dynamic yeah. range. A true wide dynamic range, it'll do both, bright and light, bright and dark. There is a couple other differences, but oh, I didn't go into them, so it was just really, that's the ones we're, we're, we're speaking about. So on the back of your cell sheets, it'll actually have the, the details on the FEO chip. And you'll see actually an image there of the ATR we spoke about. And you can see the difference between wide dynamic range and the ATR. ATR does clean it up a little bit, but nothing like the wide dynamic range. Um, stuff like the 3D mirror, um, I think that's basically means that you can rotate the lens and it'll flip the, it'll flip the picture around and we can, you can put the lens on, on an angle. Um, privacy zones we spoke about, so that's all in the spec sheet as well. So that's the FEO chip. So we've discussed um, wide dynamic range and we've discussed the digital signal processor and the three types of chips. Any questions? Or moving too slow, too fast? It's okay. I've got an image up there. I apologise for the, the, the quality of it. It's not a very good one. I had to actually get this off the net. We didn't have one in our system. Um, conventional, running with an FEO chip. Um, you can see obviously the image here is blown up. Now this is mind you that is entry level, so not even the premium. As you can see there, or if you come up and close if you need to later on, you can. You'll see the number plate is a bit more recognisable. The lines. On the, on the boot, a bit sharper. So still using the same camera and everything, it's just using a different processor chip. Processor chip. So changing that um, processor chip will give you a better resolution. So in the end, it said better resolution, 
better quality, better camera means your customers are going to be happier with the job. New technology. Um, the other new uh, part of our cameras is the lens. Rolio here in the front uh, had indicated that uh, he would prefer a, a more of a 2.8 to 11mm lens. Um, I think one of our other installs also said it. So we, uh, as, as I said, in the, with the DOS, when I brought up the DOS slide, we, took, we liked the snow installs because that's the guys out there doing the job. So the old range either had a 4 to 9mm manual lens or a fixed lens, usually a 3.6 or a 6mm. Um, the new range has 2.8 to 11mm very focal or, or manual, manual means very focal lens, um, only on the Pro series, excluding Dome 30 Pro. The Dome 30 Pro is the, is the grey one in the centre, the 15 Pro is the one on the left hand side. So um, that's what we're talking about now, this is the lens on that, and I'll just show you that in a moment. Um, we use the Pro series, so once again we're talking about Pro, so if you look in your spec sheets, the models with anything under Pro, that's what we're talking about. So Pro Series, we're using the Korean double lens. So smaller number means wider view, but less detail. Greater number means more detail, but less of the image in the display. A good way of, of, uh, of lens as well is 2.8 to 11mm is usually Korean. 2.8 to 12mm is usually Chinese. So it's a good way of differentiating between the, the two lens. Um, we still use a Chinese lens in some of the cameras. It's just the Pro Series, we use a 2.8 to 11mm and we, uh, we, we, we changed that. So what I'll do is I'll... That, sorry, the image I should have told here, the image we're showing here is the full HD. So that's why it's such a good image and we'll, we'll, we'll go on to that um, after this. We'll just flick back. Um, now, obviously the, the, the resolution is different, but I, I mind you, I'm running this on VGA, but I'm running HDMI. I apologise for that. But I didn't have HDMI when it's set up. So, so we're just talking about. Uh, so we're talking about the lens. In in these cameras, in the 15 Pros, um, you can simply take the top off with three screws and you get access to the camera. One point is I should also mention is that on that, on the 15 Pro and the FHD, magnetic base. So you can actually move it around. So if you're installing it, you can simply just swivel it. Move it around to wherever you want. And I think that's a pretty good feature. And it'll sit there. And then you can screw it up. We are, the, with the first batch, we've had a couple guys say that when they set it, and they screw it up, sometimes it will slightly move a bit with the magnetic base. We are changing that. The next series will just have a stronger magnetic. We had a couple of showing a little like that. I've seen one guy saying it's slightly changed, you know, it moved a little bit, but um, I know Flynn has been speaking, we are getting a stronger magnet, but this one is still, still a pretty good feature. So what we're talking about in here is, and, and in here you'll have one, you can come up a look later on, or, or now, or whatever, doesn't worry me. Um, also, I should mention that all these cameras will come with a screwdriver, um, an Allen key as well, so you don't need to supply your tools with it. Simply go and screw it, and you can move them backwards and forwards. That's just simply a pivot. Obviously, once, obviously it goes out of focus once you move it. And then you can just do the same with the focus. Once it's done, you just tighten it up. This is well, it's a WDR. <laughs> and then uh, you can you can simply uh, tighten it up, and it won't move. So it's a good way of, of putting it. So the idea of, of I suppose of having a very focal lens compared to a, a fixed lens is, is a situation where yeah you, know, you might want to have it, have it looking at a cashier's for example, or you might want to pull it back. You just got that range. You can you can change a bit. Where a fixed lens you have it, fixed lenses you want to you want to sit on that cashier's office, and that's all you want to see. So therefore, you'd have to put the camera in an angle or a spot where it's simply going to be seeing everything you or, you or your customer wants to see. Where with a, a very focal or manual lens, you can adjust it slightly. So if it's in a spot, you can and they say, oh look, actually I want it it's a little bit more to the cashier's. Can I can I take it in a bit? You can.
I'll pull it. I'll pull that off and then we'll show you as well. Sorry. With the other thing, what I noticed. So, so the actual the actual lens bit's moving. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Is that with the magnetic base? Yeah. 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 So that, that's that's what we're talking about. We're actually getting a stronger magnet. Yeah. Because um, that's the thing we've found is, is when it's when it's tightened up, it can move a bit, um, and therefore you want to cut the top off and just move it a fraction more. Where um, where the, the the next series will have the stronger magnetic base, so it'll just hold it a lot better. Because even if you you know if you screw it into it. To, to the ceiling or something like that, it might be slightly moved or something. Um, you got you got would put that in first and then adjust it. So if you put it on a, how would you go with that on a tin wall uh, and have a roller door on? Because the wall, you get movement, does it? Do you have any drums that can that, that make any place move? Uh, well, it's only a magnetic base on the actual lens. Yeah, that's right. But yeah. it's, if you put it vertically and yeah. you've got it on a magnet and it's on there, yeah. if you're on a, a roller door with the fact of vibration. Yeah. Do you have any drivers with a move? Well, I haven't. I haven't actually ever sort of checked it with a moving, a moving in, like they're putting on a moving spot. Um, Not on the roll. You don't put it on the roller. No, yourself, so I don't know what you put. Yeah. You wouldn't put it on a roller, but if you've got it on a tin wall, like yeah. if you, and then oh, okay, yeah, right yeah, 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 when yeah, the roller door yeah. it moves and you'll um, uh, you get vibration through the wall. Yeah, um, I haven't heard any negative. I think once Water. it covers on, that holds it. Once it covers on, that it won't move. Yeah, the, 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 co the covers, the covers should help. Oh, like, so it's it's only yes, yeah, so it's, it's not. Sorry, yeah, sorry. I was being asked. It's not. It's not. It doesn't just sit there all the time. It's simply the magnetic base. So, just, so you can hold. You can you can put in, put it up, adjust your focus, and, and then you can simply move it. Where the other ones you'd have to actually. So these ones here. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, actually, yeah, these ones here actually have to. No, no, it's just oh, for right. adjustments. So, these ones here actually so when you put the cover on, that'll keep it that yeah. 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 So these oh, okay. you actually have to unscrew it. Yeah, yeah that's right. And then adjust it and then lock it up. So yeah. Where this one here, you can so then, it, so move it around, and then if you have to adjust it, you just simply. Yeah. But the cover itself, you clear cover. Yeah, yeah, the cover. Sorry, I misunderstood what you. Yeah, yeah. Now the cover. Just so you make the cover. The cover locks it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I've removed the cover. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, we go any further. It's just the time in between where you're adjusting. The no, it's a pain in the neck. You just yeah, yeah. But, and then you, with those, you get slightly to move it in the wall, and it'll just. It yeah, but once it. the cover's on, it's it's rigid. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Rigid. Sorry. <laughs> it's getting annoying, Lewis. Really good, Dave. With the uh, HD dome as well, you do have a menu option that you can use as well. Um, probably one good thing on the Dome 30 Pro, we actually have the menu uh, you can actually use a little part of the lead that you can control as well. So we've talked about, I'll keep moving along because the people can get through, so we've talked about the lens um, and why dynamic range and FDO digital signal processor chip, so we'll talk about that. Beautiful, thanks mate. Yeah, I'll grab that for a moment. Actually, we'll grab it now. Talking about setting up cameras, I'm going to probably go on for of the market we're here, but we've got this little MO35 which we're going to run a special on and I'll, and I'll present that at the end. But um, one of the guys in the earlier sessions was saying, was, yeah, what happens is if you, you set up a camera, you've got you've got the ladder, you've got to get a, someone else to, to watch what's happening and make sure it's set up right. We do have these. Um, it's a three and a half inch recharge. No, I've just got normal batteries to run and have rechargeable. Um, it does output the power itself. So you can simply put these on your wrist, come with a wristband. I'll show you this in a moment. Um, so you can put this on your wrist. You can jump up on the ladder, put it up, and it, it does power the camera itself. So you don't even need to run power. You don't need to run video or power at this stage. All you're doing is simply holding up your, the camera you've got in the corner, showing your customer or, or, just, or just getting it for yourself. Once you've still got a bit of a ballpark, yep, that's going to be pretty good. You obviously can fix the camera, and do your final focus and lens adjustment using this. So it's a pretty good little image too. We're just running the black and white camera though, but uh, yeah, I'll show that around. 
So we're going to run a special analysis of, of that. We have got it up here as well. Um, I'll, I'll get to that in the last slide. We're going to, we're going to run about half retail just for this, just especially for you guys today, just to, just for attending the security show, the security training. So it's a handy, handy little. We used to have one about two and a half inch now. It's obviously a bit bigger, a bit bigger screen. <coughs> that was just a, a little situation there as well. We've said about you know if you have a with your lens, for example, you can come in and, and perhaps do this image to get a very great detail with a very focal lens. Just, just ignore the yellow writing, or you can blow it back up and get a wider range. Any questions? Any questions? Like, all, all going okay? Not too fast, not too slow? All good? Um, so, yes, yeah, so we'll talk about the new camera range and the three new technologies. The other technology we're talking about is a HD SDI technology, which is this one here, which is on the, on the panel. So, high definition serial, uh, serial digital in place. Um, it's a resume new technology. Now, we're talking about two, I suppose the technology or the industry talks about two versions. We talk about IP or HDSDI. Uh, they've both got very good you know, abilities in the marketplace. Um, IP, we've, we've done a couple of jobs with IP, and the quality is fantastic, but you also cost. cost. Is, is fairly up there, so it really depends on your on your customer's situations. So we have bought in some HDSDI cameras to add to our range. Our IP cameras are what, about thousand bucks, something around that, depending which ones you go for. Roughly around about that um, per camera. With the HDSDI um, trade price on that dome is one fifty five X, and you can see the quality is fantastic. The, it's able to reduce ten eighty p resolution via the monitor. The best part, I suppose, of, of the HDSDI is you can still use your pre-existing um, installation. So you can still use your RJ59. You just simply pull out the camera and replace it. If you want to view 1080p on a panel, that is now running through a... Um, I'll just chuck the box around, but it's, it's actually going under there. Is the SDI to HDMI converter. So it's an SDI input, which I'll bring that up in a moment as well as a slide on that, running to, to a HDMI output. Um, so you can simply replace the old camera with a new, but don't have to change installation. With our new range, you can't record on it. Because it's, it's HD, you can't record on it. But um, I've got a slide on the, we're just starting getting specs, I've got a slide on the, on the last slide of a new DVR coming out about April. Which will have four SDI inputs, which means you should be able to record, you will be able to record that high resolution on it at 1080p. And, and, and stream it to your iPhone as well, it's via network. The only thing is you're not going to be able to stream 1080p. Obviously. It's not going to it's, it's not going to work, it's going to crash. Your phone's going to sit there buffering forever. But you can record at 1080p. At the moment you can't. So what I'm doing with that is I'm running that straight through the converter in a HDMI input of that panel and it is running at 1080p. But it's just for viewing only. It's just image only. Can you put that into an existing DVR and record it? No, but what you can do is it has got a composite input so you can future-proof it. You can run it via composite and record off it. And then when a new DVR comes in, you can upgrade it as well. You can run it through the DVR. Um, it hasn't got an SDI input, but you, you can run it through the DVR, but yeah, you can't record, you can't, you, you're only recording at 576, yeah, yeah. yeah. The so, video so the video still works, but the 1080p is, um, is, is obviously through the converter and HDMI connection. Is it 700 uh, No, I don't think so, no, well, it, could, it could be, yeah. I've, we, we're not looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you like 700. For, for like a composite or because yeah. I mean composite's still gonna be running at 576. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah. But um, so that that's that's what's yeah that's what we're doing with the HD SDI cameras at this stage. And you said technology is fantastic. Oh, uh, I'll go through it in a minute. Um, 
I'm going to actually go into the next one, which is the dome. So it's a 30-inch Panasonic. It has got a 2.8 to 12 Current trade, 155. So I'll just... So just trying an image on the GME sign up there, on the cashiers. So you can see the range is very, very good. Obviously once you, once you adjust the range, the focus completely goes out. So just what Joe was saying up there, he was like some similar. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see the GME there, focus in very well. Mm. And then you can just simply pull it back. Look at a big a tag on it. Yeah. So there's that wider view, so if you go straight into the GMS on again. Yeah. You're, you're obviously focusing on, on the cashier's office. You can really, really work hard on that image, I guess. You can't see Lewis. You can only see it up to, up to a bit of wheel. Pull it right back. Quite easy to see Lewis and Leon. Part of Rolly. And that GME sign is still very well focused in. We're very competitive on the price at 155. Quite, quite below, I think it is about pricing. Um, we don't have any stock on at the moment, unfortunately, but uh, we have got the, the trials. Um, obviously, they came out and we had 10 or so, 10, 15 cameras which trials, and they, we, we sold through them really quickly. We've got more stock coming in, I believe, in March. So that's the FHD dome, and once again, I'm only going through a converter straight into a HDMI input, so it's, it's only just viewing on, on the There's also a body, which we do, I think we do have stock of. Yeah. Maybe six, six or seven. Five. Five, yeah. yeah. So we do have stock of the FHD body. Um, 30 inch Panasonic comes with a 6mm lens included in it, a fixed lens. You can buy other lens to go with it. But with the body one, it just, it, it's just coming with a 6mm. Once again, it has a BNC HD SDI connection and a composite out. Current trade at 155 plus. Has got the menu options on the back. Uh, the dome one actually has got menu options as well, or you can do it by the toggle switch there. What I'll do is I'll pass this one around as well. Any questions? Oh, I've got an image up there as well, but we've we'll, we'll played around with the, with the dome, so we know. With the dome, compared to all the body, uh, I guess with the body you would use more outer areas, like car parks, that you'd use to get a bit more of a range out of a body one than the dome one. Um, but it's an NTSC power connection, you can't, no face recognition. In full HD, you can get face recognition. I believe there's uh, some stuff coming on that. I don't know whether it's, it's whether it's past yet or what in Australia, but certainly in America, I think it is. Um, is that you some places like casinos, for example, uh, are specking their jobs that FHD cameras have to be used, nothing else, because they're doing installs and they go to view their, their sensitive footage. I can't recognise anyone, so now they're starting to. I've heard they're starting to spec jobs that has to be FHD quality. I don't know where that's in Australia. Do you know, Lewis, do you want to do it? I don't know where it's in Australia. I've just read that to uh, the converter, SDI input, BNC input, HDMI output, 
It actually has got a loop through as well. So that's what you can run the 1080 through and you can loop it back through, maybe run it in the system or something like that. Um, but you're not going to be viewing it at 1080. But which, once, once you're going from back through a composite cable or anything like that, you're only running it at 1080 through a, 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 a local monitor, yeah. so to speak. Can you plug out HDSCI through output straight to composite onto a TV? Uh, you, can, you can run it through a composite, I'm pretty sure you can run it through a composite signal. Yeah. Um, just, you know, straight to RCA, back to the TV. Um, not through a DVR. Oh, not through a DVR, or through a system? No, just straight out. Well, you can. Just because of, yeah, I'm not sure you can. Yeah. Yeah, I know whether, because it also depends on your, on your TV, I suppose. Because yeah, I, I had a customer try, it doesn't, it doesn't carry a composite. I don't think, I don't think it does. It's it's no, that's, it's to go, yeah, it's yeah. SDI, so you go to another converter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what you do have, though, is that on that FHD dome, you have a composite output yeah. as yeah, well. Yeah. So you can use, you just simply use the composite output on the FHD yeah, That's only dome. SDI out only. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the dome has got two, so yeah. SDI and, and composite output, but yeah. Yeah. I've had instances where a customer wants a signal to, from the camera to go to the DVR so you can record it, yeah. as well as, I think I've spoken to you about it as well, um, where they actually want to feed that signal back to a monitor. Say when you go into Coles, now they've got a camera right, uh, right at the door and then they've yeah. got a monitor there. As soon as you walk in, you see yourself walk up. Yeah. And that normally, what actually happens is you go through the DVR and then it loops back out to a monitor. Yeah. With that, you can actually go directly from that camera the composite video out directly to that monitor right then and there. Well, you could, yeah, you could. But once, once, once you had a DVR that was able to take an SDI yeah. input, then you were recording on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you, um, pretty sure it works simultaneously. I'm not, so that's something I've even tested. Of the output. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty, you can split the HDI output. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it works simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing is, obviously, like you said, the DVR <coughs> has VGA and a composite output usually anyway, and they do work simultaneously. Yes. So you can run a local monitor straight off a DVR as well. Yeah, but you've got a back cable to do that. Yeah, you, what, you right do have to, yeah, yeah. You have to bring back cable. But if you've got a dual output, you can run it straight off the SDR. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is simultaneous there. That's something I didn't, didn't sure. check. Yeah. 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 We, we can fly around with that. Have a look at that. Well, you looped out on one of those, one of the uh, converters. The converter, yeah. Loop back into another converter, you've got a second HDMI output to work around there. Yeah. Well, that's, that's another point. Is that, is that converter has got a loop out. Yeah, yeah. SDI loop out, you can run through another converter. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And then you're going to be seeing a 1080, then. Just running, if you're running it via HDMI into a, into a, a panel, Which most when you walk are, in. Got, which most panels we have HDMI mm. in those anyway. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
bring up the domes as well. You can see that there. You see a standard one there. Um, so once again, we've upgraded. We've added the new, which is the dome 15. Um, I said I'm not going to go through all the other specs. One, one good way, I suppose, one thing I should, probably should mention that looks better on the integrated series is a lot of people will say, my IR range, like, I don't know which camera to use for the IR. All our cameras come in infrared, but, they, you know, but then they'll say, well, I don't know whether I need a short infrared range or a longer infrared range. Which camera do I use? If you notice, the model numbers correspond with the IR distances, so it's a good way of them remembering. So an iron 30, you're up to about 30 metres IR. Iron 15, we'll do up to 15 metres IR. You want to go up to iron 100, 100 metres roughly IR range. It's not going to view it, it just means you can get over 100 metres of IR range. So that's also a good point, I suppose, in, in saying that you can, depending on the IR range, you can remember which model corresponds to which IR range. Um, I'm pretty sure that's about all I needed on the nose. Is that all okay? How does the domes cope with the infrared? Like if it's got the new dome cover, yep. as opposed to just the glass front? Yep. Do you have any effect with the IR being stuck behind plastic? Not that, uh, no, not, not that, not that we're, I mean, I want to go on what installs, as I said, so yeah. not, not that I know of. Joe, have you had that? No. No, no. 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 come back, so. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you should replace the domes. Sorry? Will you have a replacement dome coming? I don't know whether we will, but I, I see guess. Smashed hand really yeah, yeah I, guess, I guess that's probably a point we probably should look at. I think the text, the text, we, we, well, they pull apart the. Yeah, we, we, we can get in. I suppose it's also if someone sprays it or something like that. Yeah. Vandalism. Um, yeah, we can. We it's something we we'll probably can get in. Yeah, yeah pretty easily. So. Sometimes they just wipe out of it a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the glass covers are easy. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes you just you can't see. Obviously, insects are in the water. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, you, and, you, and you'll notice that it's really only going to be, <laughs> it's really going to be on the Dome, Dome 15 Pro and the FHD anyway that's got that new cover on it. The rest will still, still be the normal glass, glass cover. And obviously that lens changes, is a, is a little swivel, a little adjustment. It's not like to take the cover off, that was just a new series also explaining all the cover. Sorry, is that an external camera as well? Oh, is it purely internal? The domes. No, no, they can be used, it can be used external. Most of them will be vandal warm or vandal proof. Um, so they can be, can be used for external. But I guess with an integrated, so if we go back to an, into the integrated series, you are going to get more, a little bit more range when you use a, a, very, a very focal one. You'll get a bit more range. You usually have integrated, you will have a dome. I haven't put an integrated up, it's just easier to, to show a, a, a dome one inside. Um, but no, you, you can you can use it because I said they are vandal proof. You can also get um, brackets now. You can you can hang down or come off the wall, so you can actually put a dome straight off a wall, come down the side if you if you need to. So there's no real differences between integrated and, and dome. Integrated, so you get a little bit more range, but it's really what the customer wants. You know, some want a dome. You know, aesthetically, it's more pleasing in a um, in a showroom, for example. Um, so they'll go domes. Integrate, you probably use, use more so outside. But then other people don't want, yeah, other people don't want it to be and hidden away. The for the security is you want it to be in people's face to prevent something. You oh, want it to be in their face and you want it in the mould. Exactly. Face. If it's more yeah. just, to, you know, just to watch and monitor, well then you yeah. don't want it to be so much in your face. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Some people want the big integrated camera looking at you as you walk in so people know you're on security. Just one thing I want to bring up is um, these ones here, are, I've been led to believe that they're designed more for outside due to uh, sun glare as well. These have got yes. the adjustment for, for covering the sunlight because what will happen is if you've got direct sunlight on one of those uh, dome cameras, it's just going to glare out. So they are more suitable. Yeah. Yes, is that correct? Yes, yes. Yeah, a lot I, more suitable for that particular the, purpose. The shield over the top as well for that, for that matter. Because there'll be certain sort of areas you have to sort of point to you at the morning or the evening sun, and you, you kind of need to play around with that, with that adjustment. So I, get, I guess. Yeah, exactly. I guess, like as Lewis said, like, um, look, majority of jobs outside integrated, majority of jobs inside probably don't, um, ex excluding 
yeah, pencil zooms, which is used right outside. I haven't, we have got a pencil zoom camera, but I haven't minded that. I've just stuck with the new series to know. Alright, we'll keep going. That's all good. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go through the DVRs. I'm going to go through it pretty quickly because I can, the others would, yeah, we'd spend another hour. I'm not going to go through networking, port forwarding. There's this little, little spot there, remote access, which I'll, I'll tell you about uh, shortly, which, which is to do with the port forwarding. Um, but I just basically want to go through some of the options we do have. Um, ben Marshall did a training session, I think, about 12 months ago on the menu options. So that was basically another training session, completely different, just to, uh, just to do the menu options. Um, we've come a long way with our DVRs, eh? they're a lot more user friendly than we were a few years ago. Um, so four channels, so if we go 4, 8, 16. The 32 um, we trialled, but editing, Refreshing railing and all it was all it was all quite slow. So yeah, so we so we basically went to a stuck with the 16 channel. So four channel comes in two versions. There's an EK version. So more for domestic markets. It's more for music commercial. It doesn't matter. It's more for. But um, I guess we bought the EK version in to to go against um, some other retailers. We have kits available with four cameras and a DVR. For $4.99 or, or, or whatever. That. So we bought an eco version in if they don't want specifics or for a domestic situation, four channel eco would be fine. Yeah. Retails for anyway, trades. Yeah, I think the normal one's about 150, 160, about 50 to 60 bucks different. So with the eco version, no HDMI output, no alarm inputs or outputs, and just an LED display, non LCD display. So there is a few other options, but really that's the main one. Um, it will do D1 reporting on the game still. Um, with the alarm inputs and outputs, you would use them, I guess, if you... One is you can trigger your security alarm via the DVR if motion detection has picked up something, you can trigger your alarm. But the other is also an alarm input, is if your security alarm is triggered by, by a PIR, it goes off, it will then trigger your, um, your DVR, and so if you can use that remote access, so if you're away and, you, and it rings your mobile, you know, beep, 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 the alarm's been fired, you can then tap into your remote access into your DVR and see if anything's going on. It might be just a dog or something in the backyard that's triggered, triggered the alarm. You can set it to record on the channels too. Yeah, 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 yeah you, you can set it, yeah, you can do it, you can set it on the channels, but that's a good way of just, if you alarm, otherwise if you're away, you've got to get someone to go around and check or, Alarm, alarm guys, police, whatever you want to do. The normal version on four channels, D1 recording all the channels, and it has alarm inputs and outputs, and has an LCD display. So that's the echo version. So simply LED, no LCD. Um, I haven't got a back image of that, but the back image of a normal four channel, that's your alarm inputs and outputs. VGA output, composite output, your four channels, networkable. Four channel. The eight channel, it's available in two versions. Um, it's not so much an eco version of this one, but there's two versions. There's a, a, a what one input out up the other end of the hi-fi room. So if we're doing this area, the other six channels might be outside. You may not. You don't need the resolution. You just see. You just need to know what's going on, what's coming in out. So you you, would, you could use that. And it's also a D1 version, which is fully eight D1 channels. So you record in better resolution. They both have two SATA hard drive bays. So you can record, you can put two two, 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 two terabytes or two one terabytes in and record. In the last one I said there was only, if you put a three terabyte in, you can only put a one three terabyte in. Since then, it sounds like they actually tested it. Because I think I think I told Riley you can only run one three, because at that time you could. It looks like now you can run two three terabyte hard drives. So uh, yeah, so you can, and obviously if you're running D1, you're going to chew up your hard drive quicker than if you're running it in a SIF version. So um, you're going to you're going to want to put more more terabytes in there. And now with HDMI output, or just future proofing, HDMI output now, networkable as well. Uh, has got the audio inputs, um, but. I think it does take up one of the video inputs, if I remember rightly. 
because if you're running an audio input, you can only run, if you run one audio input, you can only run seven videos. That's using, I'm pretty sure it does use a, a, a channel. Uh, also, at 16, it looks exactly the same as the 8. So, normal version 4862D1, D1 version, all 16D1 channels, both at hard HDMI out, two SATA hard drive bays as well. Um, price difference is not all that much, I believe. I think the 8 one was only about 70 or 80 bucks difference, I reckon. Yeah, about that. For those that want to work out the time recording. We've got something on a website. So yes. Yeah, yeah, good point. They need to work that out for the customer. The calculator. Yeah, we, calculator have, we, have, we have hard drive calculator. If you go to any of the, say, 8 channel or 16 channel or uh, 4 channel pages on our website, scroll right down the bottom, you'll see Ben Marshall's training last year and you also will see a hard drive calculator on there. So you can simply put in there 4 channels, it'll ask you what, what resolution. Um, and you can and it'll, and it'll calculate and, and ask him how, how long you want it, how long you want to um, yeah want to, want to calculate it. So if you want to record on it for seven days, um, it'll give you it'll give you, it is an estimation. It'll just give you an estimation. So don't take it as 100% accurate. It's just an estimation. Um, yeah, or if you want to record 24 hours a day for a month, it'll give you it'll give you. And it'll also give you the the other way as well. If you've got a one terabyte hard drive. It'll give you roughly how long it'll record for, depending on the channels, depending on the resolution. So it'll work both ways. So yeah, that's a handy tool. Handy tool. That's the 16 channel. Exactly the same as the 8 really. Um, so is that all good? As I said, it's very brief on the DVRs, which is simply what what we have and some of the some of the of the situations you can use in here. Um, I'm not going into the menu options of it. Yeah, it can, yeah it'd be half a day doing that. Our power, we can have rack mantle, one R, one RU units. Um, probably has used these quite a bit. Um, or we have these now as well in a four and eight and sixteen zone cat fire power supplies. Should have one out in front, I'm sorry I didn't. Um, so what it is is your cat five runs to all your cameras will run video and power at the same time over there. So it's actually a built-in power supply. You run the Cat5 to the cameras. You're going to need balance, of course, on the other, which I'll go into balance the next slide. You'll need balance on the other side to convert it back into, or to separate the video and power. It does come with a balance. And also, then you've got your video outs is in the, in the unit, and it comes with just a little fancy jumper leads, which then you would just run into your inputs of your DVR. So you simply have your DVR, and your power supply in the one situation. They've been quite good. We've sold quite a few of them, haven't we? So they've been, they've been running quite well. So what's the price of between that and the uh, It's probably the only price I haven't got. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, no, you're right. Um, this, yeah, I think this one is a little bit dearer, yeah. Right. yeah. But then you don't have to worry about Supply the balance as well. That's right. Yeah, it comes with a balance and comes with a little B and C. The four and eight is not rack mountable, if I remember rightly. The sixteen is, but the four and eight is just a component shelf size. Where that one obviously is rack mountable. And this is the balance we're talking about. So it does come, that power supply does come with balance, but alternatively you can obviously run balance separately. So available in RJ45. So RJ45 connection on your Cat5, um, your video, and your power. Obviously your power is different because one will be at the DVR end, one will be at the camera end. As far as quality of signal over RJ59 and over a Cat5, yep. Um, is there a difference? There are a difference quality. What it is is that your biggest problem is, is voltage drop over as, as your runs. As you get voltage drop over your runs, and then you, your cameras don't work as well. So your Cat5, you can run further distances. If you're, if you're running you know, a couple hundred metres, for example, um, you can, you'd run over Cat5 and just use balance. Obviously, ease, maybe ease of installation, probably maybe a little bit easier with Cat5. Maybe there's already Cat5 putting out. Nowadays, it could be spare Cat5s already around the roof. You might just want to tap into them. 
Um, our, our CCTV Com K, which I'll bring up in a moment, has been tested over 100 metres with the voltage drop. It doesn't really volt, it doesn't really drop all that much. So it can still run roughly. And it's still like 700 TV lines, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's composite, obviously, 576, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. But, um, but yeah, you can still, about 100 metres, what we, we test our stuff up to 100 metres after that. Anyone's guess, I suppose, you can, it just depends on the situations. Um, and, then the, and then the cat 5 you'd use for the longer runs. Also, um, push pins. So if you don't want to put an RJ45 on the ends, you can just simply use push pins. They're quite, they're quite rugged, they're quite tough. Um, a lot of our stores have been quite happy with them. Yeah, you know, fitting off an RJ45 in a roof or something, for example, you might sometimes you might just want to strip the cable back. Do you use them really? Um, I was just, I was just putting it on you because you, yeah, you installed um, a few systems. I have had, we have installed one of the Sunbeam systems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
It's, cool. it's pretty, it is pretty cool, yeah. Um, so the idea we did this is because installs were installing the cameras and then they're going to do the network called DVR and port forwarding to, to a dynamic IP address. So they're taking several hours to do it. We also had people ringing up saying, I think there's something wrong with your DVR, I can't physically do it, or is there someone there who can help me? Yeah, we're getting tied up with, with on the phone and um, yeah, so we had people saying the DVR's faulty. Well, the fault, DVR wasn't faulty at all, it just does take a little bit involved. Is there a charge on that? What's the charge? Yeah, there is a charge on it. What it is, is uh, I think it's about $39 in the retail sort of sector. I believe it's a little bit less on trade now. Um, but yeah, yeah, given work with your recs or your contact details. Uh, we, we, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. So we can we can uh, we can swing that around. But yeah. Um, what you actually do is you actually I've actually just put that code in. That's the code. It has to be done via our our um, website. We you can't ring up and get phone sales and say can you book me time. You've actually got to got to go through our website. It's actually an offshore um, people. It's not actually we're not it's not controlled through us. So you simply um, put this code into your website, bring it up. You do need a few details. You will need to um, your router make and model, or your customer's router make and model, and your preferred date and time. You also will then need to download on your customer's computer probably this uh, ten view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the website it says that what you will need to do for your booking. Yeah, well, I, I, yeah, and that, that's why we do because we was tying up someone for. A couple of hours on the phone. Um, so having, having the knowledge of all the variable routers and that was the thing, yeah. the biggest problem. Yeah. 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 And that's where the guy off site apparently knows everything. Yeah, exactly right. Routers, and, that. and that's why you've got to give him a, a router maker model so he's not flying blind. Um, and you've got to give ample notice for booking. You can't just jump on the website and book it for an hour. It's not. You've got to give. So what you should do is when you book that code through our website, you give the customer's detail or not customer detail, you give the router make and model details through it. You then give them a preferred date and time, and you give them a contact number. They say on the website preferred landline. Obviously, there's situations where they can't, and the mobile's fine. They do that just so it doesn't drop out. Like the landline's less likely to drop out than a mobile will drop out. I think there's a good there's a good guide on what for the same time to decide. Yep. I'm actually linking to that as just from my brain. Yep. And also the um, Internet Explorer access. Well. Yes, yep, yep. Um, Active 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 Active. Active. Um I think that needs to be a refined bit. Yeah. You can have a little bit more info there directly. Okay. Yep. Um, and I'm looking at redoing for me on portals as well. Okay. Um, because using one it's important to get the active X in right. Yeah. Watching internal, yeah. But then externally, there's a few things to take into consideration. Yeah. Especially the text Yeah. Well, that's a point. Yeah, we we'll, we'll look at that. Because I know that the previous train back had a little bit of roughly. Yeah. Yeah. Especially the hardware as well. Yeah, exactly. With this as well, like, we're paying for this um, per month anyway, whether it gets used or not. So. We're obviously encouraging people to, to use it because it's the benefits you guys out there and and then the benefits you installs, well then you're obviously going to be more inclined to use our DVRs for example. I, I think I don't know anyone else that needs offering this service that I know of at this stage. And the other thing if Swan has their and there's and there's online in the cloud. Yeah, yeah. So there's no forward to it. Yeah, yeah. Directly, but then you have to have their product in more than one camera and the standalone. Yeah. Yeah, but buy the extra at the app with more than one. Yeah. Okay, yep. So yeah, and so it would be it has worked quite well, so it's um it's good. So if for example you might you might just if you say today's Friday, you're doing a job on Wednesday, you might book a time to install it on Wednesday, you might say oh, I run three PM for example. You also got a I think it's twelve to eight is the time you've got to give them to get a the time difference. So um and they will they will email you back and confirm that date and time because obviously if someone else has booked it, it's gonna be it's gonna be a conflict there. Once you've once you've got that preferred date and time, um, then you simply just wait for that phone call when you're on the site. They say 30 minutes usually. And they're running up and using 30 minutes. It has taken longer than some. It's 
timed as a 30 minute block, but they will not cut you off at 30 minutes if they haven't set it up. We have had it before, it's taken an hour. So they will. They will. Or different devices on the network as well. They actually have a huge impact on it. Yeah. So there has been yeah, options where it has not. And they will stay online and get that working for you. So for your remote access, for your customers as well. Um, so yeah, so that's that's the best way. Basically, what they do is they yeah, they take control of the, of the of your system, of the router, and do it remotely. They'll set that for you. They also ask you to do a couple. I think they ask you to do a couple options on the DVR, so you might have to run through them on the phone. Yes. Yep. 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 Um, so please, yeah, if you get a chance to use it, please use it um, because it's yeah. The times we have used it, you used it really once. Booked it once, I yeah. yeah, I booked it once, but um, yeah, there was an issue with, um, what was it, uh, conflict of, there was some that they didn't use it. Yeah. And once they set up, they like, set up like a dynamic IP, for example, and everything like that, so it's, if it's powered down and repowered up, it will work still. Yeah, yeah. That's obviously what we've got for you. Also, if it's a, sorry, if yeah. it's a managed site as well, because some, some companies, what they do is they, um, their IT networking is actually managed up with another company. What actually happens there is you have to get in contact with them to get them to give to tell you an IP address that you have to, have, that you have to set your DVR onto. And they're absolute because <laughs> you have to wait you rely on them then. And you have to get all that stuff organised before you do anything else. Otherwise you'll have a, your DVR is going to conflict with another IP address of another device on the network and then it crashes. You, you then you actually sit there and say, uh, the network crashes and then you'll be in all sorts of trouble. The first test we did worked really well, but obviously that was for Mike just taking home a DVR mm -hmm. and a camera and a router and said, all right, set me up. And he set up 15 minutes, I think, or 20 minutes. But obviously there was nothing else on the line. It was just a basic yeah. setup. But yeah. One thing also, I suppose, is, is to, to make note is that if your customer changes internet providers, So that's remote access service. Yeah, I'm not going to know much more about it. So much more to do once you book the time. They set up for you. All right, future adults. We'll just we're about done. So um, this is the uh, SDI DVR we're talking about. Well, HD SDI DVR coming out. I haven't even seen it. We've got five coming out as samples to trial. Seen it, I have not played with it. So, um, HDMI VGA video output, um, eight internal SATA hard drive ports. So if, you're, if you're recording in 1080p, you'll be using up hard drive space very, very quickly. And I'll have a four channel HDSDI 1080p video input with HDMI out. So, this is the future we were talking about before how with the HDSDI you can only view it monitor, on a monitor, you can now can start recording on it on the DVR. A high resolution dual stream recording, so meaning that you can you can record a 1080p on your hard drive, but you but if you're viewing it on your iPhone, you don't you don't want to be trying to view it on your iPhone. Um, so there is, I believe, two streams. One is for a, a C or D1 for remotely viewing, and the other one will be will be actually recording the playback. <coughs> Physical size, uh, the can you have of the uh, eight internal so uh, I'm yet to find, find yet to find out, but I do know that it's actually 
I think it's a 2RU size DVR. It's, it's quite it's quite a bigger unit. I think it's 2RU. I'm not, I'm not quite sure, but yeah, it is physically bigger, quite a bit bigger than that. I haven't even seen one yet. I've just that, that, I got I got the image I read a day ago, <laughs> two days ago. That's a that's an image I got emailed to me. So yeah, but physically size obviously for the hard drive space. Is that what you're talking about, the size, physical size, or like a two and a half inch, or, or as in terabyte? As, yeah, in, as in terabyte. Uh, um, I believe, I think you can run up to at least a two on there, so you, yeah, maybe 16. Uh, I suppose if you're going to use 1080p, yeah. 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 So that's a future, I apologise, I haven't even got, uh, got that one set up. So. Um, and that's basically about it. So. Um, the special today, we're talking about the M305 that we, 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 we passed around. Um, three and a half inch LCD monitor, uh, DC12 output, so you can actually control the cameras, test cameras without separate power adapter, rechargeable, comes with accessories, 149 retail. Today we've got 75 bucks, half price. Obviously no obligation for any sales or anything, it was just merely we wanted to put something today for you guys who are attending. Everyone usually likes a bit of attendance special, so that's what we've designed. So I just touch it today. So it's only black and white, no? No, it's, it's oh, colour. Color. Yeah, the, 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 the camera we had on it. Oh, it was black and white. It was a black and white camera. Yeah, it was only black and white pinup. Yeah. Yeah. So feel free for the guys that lose still running, I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, so that's it. I'm sorry if I've dragged on a little bit too much. I hope you guys get something out of it. Um, so I didn't want to go too much into the specs of the, of the DVRs and whatever. I just basically wanted to go through the new technologies and some of the new camera range. Please feel free to grab any more brochures. Remember, we do have the security wall just around the corner set up. So have a bit of a wander around. Just sit around the corner and have a bit of a wander around. Um, any questions? Let me know. Um, I don't know about answer them all, but yeah, let's go. Um, you were seeing this sort of stuff. UPS is a never bubble, and they're just essential. Are they yeah, UPS no, coming? Yeah, you actually, you actually, you are actually spot on, spot on. No, that's probably and raising as well, like you said. Yeah, a half yeah, that's quite yeah. Quite that's you probably spot on. That's something I probably I didn't put in my presentation, but um, I know when I spoke to Rolly on that, I just yeah, I had sort of chucked in quotes before. But yeah, you're you're absolutely right. What we've done. I should have said that. I get that. Have you got a card on you? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll give you one of my cards, and if you've got one, if you're using one of the reps, order, that's fine, but just um, flip me an email, and um, because what... Oh, good stuff. Um, yeah, so, so, yeah, so what we're saying is that we actually had this bit of a, a, a Ben Martin just did for us a bit of a... Just a quick little guy. It was more for, I suppose, if you know, you install a lot. So, but basically, it was like, okay, which cameras, what power supply to run with what. And then it had a large range offer a UPS and roughly what. But you'll be honest, yeah. Because you're right, because the first thing you need to do is try to cut the power. And we're not out to run it for an hour or anything. We just simply want it to run for maybe 10 minutes. Then it cut the power and got in, and the DVR is still running. So, you're right.